Good morning, everybody. Southwest Florida Mike here, and welcome to All Vapor, No Smoke. Um, I've had a few people request that I do a step-by-step -step video on how to build my pipes and put these things together, and I'm going to start that for you today. Um, I'm building a larger pipe for somebody. It's going to hold an 18650 battery, which is pretty freaking long. It's going to be a big pipe. So I'm going to shoot this video in segments. Um, it's going to be over the course of a few days. You're going to see the wardrobe change a little bit but I'll try to break it down as simple as possible for you. So you can see I got my ratty shop clothes on. Uh, let me pause this. I'm going to head out to the shop and grab a couple of okay, things and bring them back. All right, shows. now we're going to start building an 18650. Can't talk this morning. Two cups of coffee, not quite enough. Sorry. We're going to start building an 18650 style battery pipe. Okay. First thing you're going to need, and this is what I've been building them out of lately, is a wooden dowel. Um, sometimes I carve them freehand out of chunks of wood to get some of the ornate shapes, but this one is going to be round. Um, pretty thick piece of wood. You're going to need this, a pencil, and an 18650 battery. Okay, um, We're going to use the battery to kind of measure out where we want to make our first cuts. So. I got to bear with me because I'm, I'm doing this very retarded. <laughs> okay, here we go. Hang on. A uh, very simple thing to do. Take your battery, place it up against the wood. Now when we do this, we want to leave ourselves plenty of room to play with it, shape it, uh, leave some room for mistakes. Now your battery, you want it to have room on either side, top and bottom in order to put battery connectors in and have room for a spring. It's not an exact science, so draw your line down on the base. Just a little notch is all you need. Draw a line at the top, just over the battery, maybe a few millimeters higher. This long section here will be the battery chamber. This shorter section here will be your lid. Like you said, it looks thick right now, but once you get shaping it and sanding it down, putting the necessary holes in there, it's gonna refine itself as you go and you leave yourself some room uh, for error or maybe some ornate designs or whatever it is you're going to do. Best thing to do when you're doing these is draw your concept out on paper first. Uh, get an idea okay, of what you here want we are. to do. Now, I've made the first cut, okay? What I did with this is I forgot to tell you before I went out to the shop. I drew a small line right there where my cut line was going to be. And the reason why I do this is because sometimes when you cut it, the pieces fly apart on the floor and it's just going to make it easier for you to line it back up using that line because your grains right now really aren't that pronounced. You can't see them very well. You haven't done any sanding on the wood and this is just going to keep you where you need to be lining up your top and bottom. The next thing you need to do, you see it's how much room there is here. That battery chamber is actually much larger than it needs to be, but once you shape your pipe and sand it down, you can refine it from there. Okay. Next thing you need to do is you need to drill a pilot hole. Okay. This pilot hole is going to guide you from the top all the way to the bottom with everything that you do from the hole on the top where the top of your button is. It'll line up the inside lid for where the button seats and makes the connection with the negative ring and line it up with the battery chamber. If your pilot hole is not right and it is not straight, it's not going to come out right. So this is very important. This is probably one of the most crucial points, uh, one of the most crucial points of putting your pipe together is being able to line everything up from top to bottom. Uh, it's kind of difficult to get center on these. I eyeball it. Uh, some people may want to break out the uh, break out a compass or break out your uh, tape measure to get the exact dimensions. But when I drill a pilot hole, I'm going to use this screw and I'm going to use a drill that's a little bit smaller than the uh, screw itself so it fits tight. So I kind of eyeball it. I usually get pretty close. And if it's not perfectly center, oh well, as long as it's straight up and down, bottom, top to bottom. You know, little mistakes here and there. It's a handmade mod. I think the little mistakes kind of give it character, so it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be perfect. And my dog is trying to kill the neighbor. All right, now 
what I did was is I'm using a drill press for this doing it by hand with a hand drill it can be done but it's freaking difficult to get the angle right and uh, quite frankly my eyes are too damn crooked to do it that way pilot hole from the top all the way through the lid probably about halfway down or you know you don't want to go all the way but go pretty far because that pilot hole is going to guide your larger drill bits down to the base but from this point I want to line my pencil line back up and I hold it well best I can so let's get it started first from the very top okay you want to put this screw in when you put your lid on with the screw it's going to hold your lid down nice and tight so that you can proceed to do all your shaping and sanding on the main part of it, the heavy duty stuff. So that nothing moves and everything lines up nice. Alright, Mike, didn't eat your freaking Wheaties this morning, did you? That's what I get for living on a caffeine and nicotine diet, but here we go. Alright, there we are. That's what you're working with. Now it doesn't have to be lined up completely perfect because once you put your magnets in the lid, it's probably going to throw it off a little bit anyway. You'll finish the rest of it through your sanding and shaping and cutting and putting I've your designs I've cut my lid, I've cut my battery chamber, I've got my pilot hole that runs pretty much halfway through here, held nice and tight with a screw. Now I'm ready to start working with this piece and shaping it and sanding it and molding it and coming up with a concept that I like. Uh, most of what I do is going to be done with a sanding block that I put together by hand. And this is my trusty friend right here. Uh, <laughs> my Hitachi grinder with a good uh, sanding pad on it. Everything I do I mold it by hand. This gets a little bit dangerous so please watch your fingers. I don't want anybody emailing me telling me they're pissed at me because they lost a finger. So. Just be very careful when you're doing this. Be mindful of what you're doing. And if you have goggles or some kind of safety equipment, my advice to you is definitely wear it because this thing will spin right out and smack you right in the face. And I can tell you right now, that does not feel good in your eye. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on this. This is a basic, uh, basic shape that I'm doing for this guy, so it shouldn't take me that long. Uh, I'll be now that I've done the basic shaping, um, I went out with the grinder. I held it at a 45. I'm not going to do that part on camera simply because one, it's loud, you can't hear a freaking thing. And if it's silent, it's boring and I'm no good at the music editing aspects of things. So please bear with me. One day I'll do something out in my shop and do step by step that way, but for now we'll do it like this. Um, I use my grinder. I grind the edges down at about a 45, top and bottom. Smooth it all out with my sandpaper or a sanding block. And it kind of I didn't spend a lot of time on this. This may be 10 minutes. I mean, it's got a blemish here and there in the cap. Those will start to disappear as you refine it. But I just wanted to do it enough to get the basic shape and to bring out some of the grain so that I can find the personality points, as I like to call them, in the pipe so I can figure out how it's going to sit, where I should place the shank in the hole um, so that it features the best aspects of the wood on the outsides and not hidden on the back. Um, now that I've gotten this far, it's time to drill some holes. <laughs> uh, if you have a drill press, this is going to make your life a lot easier. Doing it by hand, I don't suggest you're going to lose a finger and you're never going to get the hole straight. Uh, this is an axle cap. You can pick them up at Lowe's or Home Depot or any hardware store. Uh, it's half inch. Now, the half inch axle caps, the ring itself is a one inch diameter. Now what I'm going to do is I'll take the lid off. Let me do that now. should have done this a second ago, sorry. You're going to drill on the lid from two different directions with two different drill bits. From the bottom, not the top, from the bottom because this cap is going to sit inside of this 
you need to get that one inch diameter ring. Here's your pilot hole. One inch drill bit. The point of this will go right in the pilot hole. You don't have to worry about lining it up, that's what the hole's for. You want to go probably about halfway in. That's going to leave enough room for your cap to sit in there and the negative ring is going to sit up in your lid. The negative ring is part, part of what holds your lid stable so it doesn't swim back and forth along with the magnets. So you do your half inch or your one inch, excuse me, about halfway down. Okay. Now the top of this button, oddly enough, is the perfect size for a 5 8 You'll take your 5 8 drill bit and go from the top part of the pilot hole straight down through. And it's going to create a tapered effect to the hole. I'll show you that when I come back. The third drill bit you're going to need is a 3 4 or 3 quarter. This is the same diameter as your battery, just about a little bit wider. This one, you're going to go from your pilot hole in the battery chamber one down into the base. Don't be careful not to go too far. That's why we want to give ourselves some extra play so that the bottom of the drill bit doesn't go through. Um, you want to kind of eyeball it, uh, stop about, you know, as far as you feel comfortable with, uh, as close to the bottom as you can get without punching a hole through it. And then you'll end up having to finish grinding out the inside with a standard drill bit, like a, a 5 8 drill bit, wood bit, and just kind of grind down on the inside and the bottom, and that will level it out you know, without punching a hole through the base, and you'll fit your battery in. So let me go do these holes, and I'll be right now back. Now that I've drilled my holes, looks like. I'll show you what this aspect of it looks like. There's your top hole. Now you'll notice it's not perfectly even. I eyeballed it. Um, and that's fine. Your pipe will have personality, as I like to call it. Uh, not to mention, if it sits a little bit to one side, that's fine. Nine times out of ten, you'd be able to mount the shank out the other side, and the button's going to be closer to the edge if you've got smaller hands. Um, but five-eighths on the top. Start with this one on the bottom, like I said, the half inch. Gives you that fat diameter so that the button will fit inside the cap. And there's plenty of room in there so that the negative ring that mounts on the top of this will actually recess itself into the lid and will actually hold your lid steady for you along with the magnets. Uh, and you'll see there's still a long way to go on the top. I mean, I can get barely get my fat fingers in there, but I'm going to end up sanding this down even more, rounding the edges so that it's a nice comfortable push. And then it'll sit like that on the top once it's all sanded down. Um, now that I've gotten to this point, I need to be able to line the lid up with the top of the mod and mount the magnets. Um, best way to do that, and the way I've been doing it, is using a stiff copper wire. Cut myself a length of wire. That might not be long enough, but let's try that. This is an old crap 18650 I don't use anymore. Now it's out in my shop just so I can use as a frame of reference and size. And just so you see the battery, it is recessed a little. And that is so you have room for some spring action of the button. You don't need a whole lot of room, just to, just to touch, just to be able to touch that button down. But there's also room at the base for me to put um, a battery contact in the wire. And I'll do, that's probably loud, sorry take my wire and wrap it around my 18650 battery make a circle okay I can stop banging crap sorry guys I kind of hand mold it to the inside of this okay. so it's, it's small at the moment so I'll come out Eyeball it a little bit. That's pretty close. Cut off the excess. Now, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. It doesn't have to touch. The wire does not have to touch one end to the other. This is basically just a guide 
to help you mount your magnets, your lid, and the negative wire that you use for the ring on the top to make your negative connection. Okay. Now it's still a little tight. And it doesn't want to come out. <clears throat> Bastardo, come on. Let's see here. Get out, get out. There we go. Still kind of overlapping a little bit. I'm going to cut that excess off. And my wife's going to kill me because I'm doing this in the living room. But that's okay. All right. Almost. You might want to do is take a small piece of sandpaper and just hit the inside of that real quick. It'll take any of the fuzz off that the drill may have left behind and it will make a nice smooth area for your switch to go up and down without running into any interference. Okay. Great. Now I got a vacuum. Alright. Come on. <gasps> Come on. There we go. Now, I want to press it to try to mold it to the inside. And I use just a screw or maybe a pair of tweezers, a couple pairs of tweezers and a screwdriver. Whatever is comfortable for you. Okay. Now see, that ring molds right in there. Let me line up my grooves. That was loud again. Sorry, I don't use a towel. And it places it exactly where I want it to be around here. And I will use an industrial glue to hold that into place. And I will be right back after I do that. It takes a little while for this glue to dry. I'm just trying to help it along. I wonder if I'll get kicked off YouTube for blowing on a stiff piece of wood. <laughs> Right there we are. There's my lid. There's my negative ring. Well, the guide anyway. Glued into place. There's room on the inside edge for your negative wire to make your connection to your battery. Next thing I have to do, which is one of the biggest pain in the heinies, is get these itty bitty magnets. And it's kind of hard to tell because my camera's a little blurry, but there are four magnets on the end of this drill bit. They are rare earth magnets. Each one has a power rating of N52, uh, whatever the hell that means. I didn't do a whole lot of research into how these things are polarized. But they are north-south magnets. They are very tiny. I don't know if you can see it on there. I'll place them on the lid first, since that's my widest point I need to worry about. Uh, I know there's always going to be wood-to-wood -wood contact if I line up on the lid first and not the base. I'll line my magnets up, I'll recess them into the pipe, and my lid will be on the way it's supposed to be, and then I'll be able to begin the final shaping. So let me get that part right now. Got the most difficult part of this in my mind, and that's the magnets. You can see where the plunger switch sits. Um, I left some of the burn marks on the top that'll add some characteristics to the top, like this was an actual uh, bowl for the pipe. Uh, spring with the battery and the switch fit nice, compresses really nice, really smooth. There's the switch I'm using off my pipe that I'm using right now. And your magnets are on the top. Just drill small holes, go real slow. They'll just press fit right in. You shouldn't have to glue them. And that's it. Now uh, now it's just a matter of design. And once I finish sanding it until my arm falls off, <laughs> I'll figure out how it sits. Usually I like them to lean forward a little bit. So I'll take the back side where it's angled and it's leaning forward and I'll put the shank here coming out. I don't know 
exactly what he wants yet as far as the shank goes. I don't know if he wants it to fit a tank or if he wants something ornate made out of copper uh, or just a straight piece. I'm not too sure. I haven't communicated that far with him as far as what he wants the shank to look like. So it may be a few days before I get on here and do the next segment. But that's the base. Magnet lid. Here's your guide ring. Battery fits in there nice recessed. Nice tight fit for the magnets. And uh, off to do the next segment.